Do it. Do it in times of misfortune, befalls, suffering, disaster, calamities, worries, hardship, distress, grief, anxiety, difficult, depression, testing, and afflictions part 2. Do it to overcome difficulties. A do it for when things become difficult for a person. Narrated Anas bin Malik that the Prophet said, in another narration, the Prophet used to supplicate saying, Allahumma sala illa majal tahu sala wa anta tajal ul hasna ida shurta sala. Oh Allah! Nothing is easy except what you have made easy. If you wish, you can make the difficult easy. Collected by Ibn Hibban in his Sahih 2427, Ibn As-Sunni 351 in Adiyya and al muqtara 1683 and 1684. Abu Nuim and Akbar Asfahan 2305 and Al-Asfahani in Al-Targib 131-1 in Al-Hafid, Ibn Hajar, said that this hadith is authentic. It was also declared authentic by Abdul Qadir al Arnaut in his checking of Anawawi's Kitab al Afghar, page 106. Sheikh al Albani declared it Sahih in Al Sahihah 2886 and said, It is as per the condition of Imam, Muslim. And also graded as Sahih by Sheikh Mukbil in Sahih al Musnad 73. Explanation Sheikh ibn Alif Amin said, the meaning of this dua is that anything which Allah has not made it easy for a person, then it will never be easy for him to do or achieve. Easy is that which Allah has made easy. Al-Hazan means that which is extremely difficult, and if Allah wills, he can make it convenient, easy, and simple. And if Allah wills, he can make an easy thing inconvenient, difficult, and hard, for everything is in the hands of Allah. Through this dua a person is asking Allah to make the difficult affairs easy for him. And he is praising Allah, and affirming that everything is in the hands of Allah alone, and that only he, can remove the difficulty and make the affairs easy. Source Translated by Fahad Barmam, ILM for all. DUA for repelling anxiety, grief, sadness, sorrow, depression, worries, hardship and distress. From the Hadith of Abu Bakr, that the Prophet, said, the supplications for anxiety and grief is. Alahama Ramataka Arju, Fala Takilni Ila Nafsi Tarfatain Asli Li Li Shani Kala, La Lahaha Ila Enta. O oh Allah, I hope for your mercy, do not entrust me to my own self even for the blink of an eye, correct for me all my matters, there is none worthy of worship except you. Narrated by Ahmad, 27898, and Abu Dawud, 5090. It was classed as Hassan by Al Albani in Sahih al Jami, 3388. In another narration, Anas ibn Malik said, whenever a matter would distress the Prophet, he would say, Ya Hayu Ya Kayum by Ramataka Astagith. O ever living, O sustainer, by your mercy I seek your help. Reported by At Termidi, No. 3524, and graded as Hassan by Sheikh al Albani. According to another report, if some matter worried him or distressed him, Sahih al Jami al Sagir, 4791. And in another narration, part of the morning and evening Adkar. From Anas bin Malik, who said that the Messenger of Allah, said to Fatima, What prevents you from listening to me with what I advise you with? That you should say in the morning and evening. Yahayu Yakeumu Bairamatika Astagith, Asli Li Shane Kulahu Walla Takalni Ila Nafsi Tarfata Ainan Abada. O the everlasting, O the sustainer and protector of all that exists. I seek aid through your mercy, correct for me all my matters and do not entrust me to my own self even for the blink of an eye, ever. Narrated by Anasai in as sunan Al-Kubra, 10330, and in Amal al Wa Layla, no. 46, by Al-Hakim in Al-Mustadrak, 2000, by Al-Bayhaqi in al asma was Sifat, 112, and others. al Muntari said in at Targib Wat Tarhib, 1313 its Isnad is Sahi. Sheikh al Albani said in As Silsila As Sahiha, no. 227 Its Isnad is Hassan. Explanation of the Dua Sheikh Abdurrazak al Bagr explains How great is it in terms of supplication? The Prophets, saying, O oh Allah, your mercy I hope for. Meaning, your mercy alone, O oh Allah, I do not hope for the mercy of anyone besides you. This contains sincerity and it contains tawheed. This is the quality of the believers. Allah the Exalted has said. 
those whom they call upon, like Isa, Jesus, son of Miriam, Mary, Uzair, Ezra, Angel, etc., desire, for themselves, means of access to their Lord, Allah. As to which of them should be the nearest and they, Isa, Jesus, Uzair, Ezra, Angels, etc., hope for his mercy and fear his torment. Verily, the torment of your Lord is something to be afraid of. al Isra 1757 those angels and others whom they call upon are themselves seeking good actions to bring them closer to Allah and competing to see who is closest to him by obeying him. They hope he has mercy on them and they fear his punishment. The punishment of your Lord, O Messenger, is what should be feared. Al-Isra, 57 So he begins his supplication to repel stress which has afflicted him with this expression of Tawheed, O Allah, your mercy I hope for. Meaning, I hope for mercy from you and I seek it from you. I do not seek it from anyone besides you. The prophets, saying, do not entrust me to my own self even for the blink of an eye. This contains a display of the slave's complete need for Allah the mighty and majestic in every single moment and every single place. So you are in need of Allah, even to blink one's eye. You are in need of Allah the mighty and majestic in all of your affairs. You are not self-sufficient of you, Lord. As for Allah, he is self-sufficient of you in every way while you are in need of him in every way. Due to this you say, do not entrust me to my own self even for the blink of an eye. If Allah was to entrust you to yourself, even for one moment, then you would be lost and go astray. He whom is entrusted to himself is lost. He who is entrusted to other than Allah is lost. Due to this, from the bounty of Allah upon you is that he does not entrust you except to him. Because if he entrusts you to him, glorified and exalted be he, then he has entrusted you to strength, might, power, and authority. Is not Allah sufficient for his slave? AZ Zimmer 39 36 Is Allah not sufficient for his servant, Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his religious and worldly matters and to ward off his enemy? Indeed, he is sufficient. They frighten you, O Messenger, because of their ignorance and foolishness, with the idols that they worship besides Allah, that they will harm you. Those whom Allah abandons and does not bless with guidance, will have no one to guide them. AZ Zumar 36 And whosoever puts his trust in Allah, then he will suffice him. At Talik 65 3 And he will provide for him in ways he did not even imagine, nor had ever thought of. Whoever relies on Allah in his matters, he will be sufficient for him. Indeed, Allah will make his decision come to pass, nothing makes him incapable nor does he miss anything. He has appointed a fixed time for everything, so the severity and ease both have fixed times, they are never permanent on the human. At Talak, 3 Sufficient for me is Allah, in him those who trust, i.e. believers, must put their trust. AZ Zimmer 39,38 O oh, Messenger! If you ask these idolaters, who created the heavens and who created the earth, they will say, Allah created them. Say to them, to show them the inability of their gods. Tell me about these idols that you worship besides Allah. If Allah willed to harm me, do they have the power to remove that harm from me? Or if my Lord wished to grant me mercy from him, are they able to stop his mercy from me? Say to them, Allah alone is enough for me. It is on him that I rely in all my affairs. It is on him alone those who want to place their reliance and trust their affairs to. AZ Zimmer, 38 So when you put your trust in Allah you will never fear anything and everything will fear you. If you do not put your trust upon Allah then, Allah will cause you to fear everything, to the point that that which you trust in from the created beings, you will be entrusted to it. Thus, it will be a reason for your loss and destruction. As has come within the hadith that the Prophet said, Whoever wears an amulet, may Allah not fulfill his need, and whoever wears a seashell, may Allah not give him peace. Ahmad reported it 3154 as did Al Hakim 4240, and he graded it as Sahih. Ibn Hibban also reported it in his Sahih No. 6086 on the authority of Akba ibn Amir al Juhani. Al Haythami said, 5103 Ahmad reported it, as did Abu Yala and At Tabrani, and the men in its chain are trustworthy. This is because the one who wears an amulet and wears seashells connects his heart to them, so he is lost. 
whereas the Muslim does not connect his heart except to Allah the glorified and high, and he does not take refuge except with Allah, and he does not rely except upon Allah. Prophet's Prayers for Refuge with Allah and Dikr at Times of Tribulation and Hardship The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Shall I not tell you of something that, if any worldly calamity or disaster befalls any man among you and he says these words, he will be relieved of it. It is. The duay of Dhul Noon, La ilaha illa and Tasa Panaka ini kuntamin al zalamin, none has the right to be worshipped but you, O Allah, glorified, and exalted, be you, above all that evil, they associate with you. Truly, I have been of the wrongdoers. According to another report, no Muslim man says this duay concerning anything but Allah will answer his prayer. Sahih al Jami al Sagir wa Zai Datuhu, 2065. The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, to Asma bint Umais, shall I not teach you some words which you can say at times of distress and hardship? Alehu Allahu Rabbi La Ashraku Bihi Shayan, Allah is my Lord, I do not associate anything with him. Dot. Narrated by Abu Dawud, 1525, classed as Sahih by Al Albani in Sahih Abi Dawud, 1349. According to a version narrated in Al Sahih Al Jami, whoever is afflicted by worry, distress, sickness, or hardship, and says, Alehu Allahu Rabbi La Sharika Allah, Allah is my Lord. He has no partner or associate. Will be relieved of that. The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, The words of relief are La ilaha illallah al Azim al Halim, La ilaha illallah Rab al Arsh al Azim. La ilaha illallah rab ul samawati wa rab ul ard wa rab ul arshay al karim, there is no true God but Allah, the all-powerful, the forbearing. There is no true God but Allah, Lord of the mighty throne, there is no true God but Allah, Lord of heaven, Lord of earth, and Lord of the noble throne. Sahih al-Jami al-Sagir wa Zayadatuhu, 4571. And there are other ahadith which will have a positive effect in times of tribulation and fear, bringing peace of mind and physical safety, and drawing one closer to Allah. We should be content with that which has been narrated in Sahih reports from the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. For that is sufficient and we have no need to reports that are not sound. This is better. And Allah knows best. Do is seeking refuge in Allah from difficulties of calamities, utter destruction, the evil of what has been decreed and from the malicious joy of the enemy. On the authority of Abu Huraira, Allah's messenger, said, Seek refuge, in Allah, from Allahumma ani ayudu baika min jabal balai, wa darakas shakai, wa suayel kadai, wa shamatadalayeda. I seek refuge with Allah from the severe difficulties of calamities, from being overtaken by utter destruction, from the evil of what has been decreed, by Allah. And from, the pain experienced due to, the malicious joy of one's enemies, when a calamity has befallen you. Reported by Al-Bukhari, number 6347 and 6616, and Muslim, no. 2707. Imam Muslim narrates it as something the Prophet did, as opposed to a command from him. In some of the narrations of the Hadith, it has, the Prophet, used to seek refuge, in Allah, from, the above, reported by al-Bukhari, no. 6347, and Muslim, number 2707 from Abu Huraira. Explanation of the Hadith This hadith is comprised of seeking refuge in Allah from four, four, matters. The first. The statement of the Prophet. I seek refuge in Allah from, Jabal Bala, the severe difficulties of calamities, refers to everything that afflicts a person, including difficulties and hardships. And that which one does not have the ability to bear, nor is he able to repulse it. The second. The statement of the Prophet, seek refuge in Allah from, Darakish Shakai, from being overtaken by utter destruction, dot. The word Darak, means overtaking and reaching something. As for the word Shaka, it is the opposite of Sa'ada, i.e. good fortune, success and prosperity. Hence, its meaning is Al-Halak, utter destruction and ruin, or that which leads one to destruction and ruin. And this, destruction and ruin, may occur in the worldly affairs as well as in the affairs of the hereafter. The third. The statement of the Prophet, seek refuge in Allah from Suayel Qadai, i.e., from the evil of what has been decreed, by Allah. Here the word al qada divine decree, which is an action of Allah Himself, actually refers to al-Makdi, i.e., that which occurs as a result of the divine decree. 
Hence, what is intended here is, seeking refuge in Allah from, that which causes harm to the human being, or that which causes him to fall into that which is hated or detested. And this is general, including that which afflicts in nafs, one's person, al-mal, one's wealth, al-al, one's spouse, al alad, one's children, as well al-katima, i.e. having an evil end to one's life. The fourth. The statement of the prophet. Seek refuge in Allah from, shamatati alaydu'ai from, the pain experienced due to, the malicious joy of one's enemies, when a calamity has befallen you, which refers to that which causes pain. To the heart like the scraping of a scab off a wound, and reaches the depths of one's soul, due to the joy of his enemy as a result of a calamity which has befallen him. Excerpt taken from the book Explanation of Supplications of the Prophet, related to seeking refuge in Allah which is taken from Fiqh al adai wal Adkar by Sheikh Abdur Razak Ibn. Abdul Muzan al badr DUA in times of misfortune and calamities. Anas, reported that, the Messenger of Allah, said, Let not one of you wish for death because of a misfortune which befalls him. If he cannot help doing so, he should say, Alahama ahain ma kanadal hayatu kairan li, wa tawafani ida kanadal wafadu kairan li. O oh Allah, keep me alive as long as you know that life is better for me, and make me die when death is better for me. Al Bukhari, 7121, number 5671, Muslim, 42064, no. 2680. And Nawawi, said. This indicates that it is clearly disallowed to wish for death because of some harm that befalls one, such as sickness, poverty, trials caused by an enemy, and other worldly hardships. It also indicates that if a person feels that he cannot bear patiently the situation in which he finds himself, being tested with sickness and the like, then let him say, O oh Allah, keep me alive so long as living is good for me, but it is better to be patient and be content with the divine decree. End quote. What you must do is be patient with that which Allah has decreed for you, and look for the good consequences, which are forgiveness of sins and a great reward, if you are patient. Only those who are patient shall receive their rewards in full, without reckoning, AZ Zimmer 39,10. O Messenger, say to my servants who have faith in me and my messengers, be mindful of your Lord by carrying out his commands and refraining from his prohibitions. For those amongst you who did good actions in the world is good in this world through divine assistance, health and provision, and in the afterlife through paradise. And the land of Allah is vast, so migrate therein until you find a place in which you can worship Allah without anything stopping you. The patient will be given their reward on the day of judgment without any counting or limit, due to its abundance in different types. AZ Zummer, 10 A long life is better for the believer, because he may increase his righteous deeds thereby. Muslim, 2682, narrated from Abu Huraira, that the Messenger of Allah, said, No one of you should wish for death or pray for it before it comes to him. When one of you dies, his good deeds come to an end. A longer life of a believer is nothing but good for him. The best and the worst of people. Abu Bakra, reported. A man said, O Messenger of Allah, which of the people are best? The Prophet, said, one whose life is long and his deeds are good. The man said, Which of the people are worst? The Prophet said, one whose life is long and his deeds are evil. Jamie at Tirmidhi 2330, Sahili Gary High, authentic due to external evidence, according to Al-Albani. Sheikh Ibn al Amin said, Therefore, it is not allowed for anyone to wish for death on account of some harm, hardship or difficulty that has come to him. In fact, he should have sabr, patience, and expect a reward from Allah the Most High due to his being patient, and he should wait for relief to come to him. Just as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, And know that victory comes with patience, relief with distress, and ease with hardship. Sahih, related by Ahmad, 11308, from Ibn Abbas Radiallahu Anhu. It was authenticated by Al-Albani in Takrija Sunnah, Numbers 315-318. So the one who is afflicted with any affliction should know that those afflictions are an expiation for some of the sins he has committed. Indeed, no believer is afflicted with any kind of grief, pain or suffering except that Allah expiates due to that some of his sins, even if it be the harm caused by a mere pricking of a thorn. So when a person has patience and hopes in a reward from Allah, he reaches the level of being amongst the Sabarun, those who truly have patience, and this is a very lofty level. 
Allah, the Most High said about its people. And give glad tidings to the patient ones, those who, when afflicted by a calamity, say, Indeed we belong to Allah, and to him shall we truly return. Surah Al-Baqarah 2,155-156 Allah will test people with different types of hardships, some with fear of those who are against them, hunger because of lack of food, lack of money because of losing it or difficulty gaining it. Loss of lives due to death from diseases and tragedies that kill people, or being martyred for the sake of Allah, and a lack of resources from the earth. Give good news, O Prophet, to those who are patient in the face of these hardships, of what will make them happy in this world and in the afterlife. The patient are those who, when they are struck by one of these hardships, say, in acceptance, that all power belongs to Allah, He deals with us as He wills. And we will return to Him on the Day of Judgment, and it is He who created us and showers us with many blessings, so, to Him is our return and our end. Al-Baqarah 155-156 Perhaps if such a person had remained alive, then Allah would have guided him her to the doors of repentance, seeking forgiveness, patience, facing up to the problems and expecting relief. All of this would have been good for him. Therefore, it is upon you to be patient and expect relief from Allah the Mighty and Majestic, just as Allah the Most High said in his book. So indeed with hardship there is relief. Indeed with hardship there is relief. Surah Inshara 94,5-6 Indeed, with difficulty and constraint, comes ease and options. Indeed, with difficulty and constraint, comes ease and options, when you know that well, the troubling of your people will not terrify you and will not stop you from calling towards Allah. So when you finish your work and complete it, strive in the worship of your Lord. And divert your passion and resolve toward Allah alone. Surah Inshara 94,5-8 And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the authentic narration, Victory comes with patience, relief with affliction, and ease with hardship. Sahih, related by ad Delami, for 111 to 112, from Anas Radiallahu Anhu. It was authenticated by Al Albani in As Sahihah, number 2382. Fatawawa Al Mara, pages 10 11. R.